Ada explained Cardano smart contracts and El Salvador Ada adoption. All right, guys, it's been a while since I did a Cardano video. And with the release of Cardano Alonzo, which comes with the release of smart contracts, this is something that I want to revisit. Now, if you haven't watched my Cardano guide, then please be sure to watch that to get up to date with everything that has been going on with Cardano and what these upgrades are about. Because Cardano, like I said, hasn't been a competitor to Ethereum until now. It's been touted the Ethereum killer for the reason that it is much more efficient than Ethereum with the use of its side chains. And now that it has smart contracts, it can finally get into the decentralized application space and compete against Ethereum. Look guys, if you are new to crypto investing, just know this, it is not the amount of coins that you hold that make quality picks. One Cardano is worth 167,000 Shiba Inu token. You don't need 167 pounds. One ADA coin is enough. Well, not enough. They're only like $1.30, so get like 100 of those. Today, we're gonna catch up with the recent events, the Alonzo smart contracts upgrade, cross-chain bridges, and potentially some conspiracy with El Salvador potentially adopting ADA. We'll talk about that in the video. So make sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe, now, let's jump into the video. Start off with Alonzo and smart contracts. Now, as we all know, Cardano is one of the, or is the only blockchain that is based on research and experimentation. They've taken and is still taking the slow and methodical approach of security and scalability and testing and refining things until releasing them for use. Most new blockchains don't do that. And once they get to scalability where they have a lot of users, they're on a roll, that scalability becomes an issue. Now, Cardano promises to solve that with the release of Alonzo. The Cardano team has reported that the first smart contracts were executed on the Cardano testnet without any issues. There are three steps in the Alonzo rollout process, and the first two steps have already been completed with the recent deployment of Alonzo Blue 2.0 node. Basically, this means that developers are testing the network and the release is going as planned. The golden era is expected to start at the end of August. And if you don't know what the eras are, then please check out my guide because I go through all of that. So what is expected from this? We're going to be expecting new DeFi applications and NFT projects that weren't possible on other blockchains such as gaming, social media, and other mainstream use cases will now be possible. And they also have an ERC-20 converter. The Cardano team has been working hard to create user-friendly bridges to connect to other blockchains, most notably Ethereum, because Ethereum has the largest community of developers. We want to steal those developers. The ERC-20 converter will allow tokens from Ethereum to live on the Cardano blockchain while letting users move back to Ethereum at any time. Romain Pellerin, who is the CTO of IOHK, the Cardano team basically, mentions the following. We believe that blockchain technology will only achieve mainstream acceptance when the end users are not locked into one blockchain or standard. Bridges like this are an absolute necessity in order to ensure that users have a seamless experience. Now, over 71% of total ADA has been staked, and this shows the amount of confidence that the community has in the project. And apparently, the venture capitalist who likes to get in big in projects like these in order to manipulate the markets have been struggling on getting a sizable stake of Cardano at a good price. Staking allow crypto investors to earn interest on their staked ADA by locking their coins into the protocol in order to validate network transactions. If you want to learn how to do that, then check out my ADA staking video. And I would say stake ADA over something like Polkadot any day because you don't need a minimum amount of ADA to earn rewards. Whereas Polkadot, you actually do. If you go to pool2.io, this is actually a website that checks out the Cardano pool. They check out the total amount staked. So we have $31 billion of Cardano stakes, which represents 71% of the total circulating supply. And total circulating supply is around 43.3 billion. And the total staked addresses, we have over half a million, 671,211 total staked addresses. And if I remember correctly, there is around 5.98 million Ethereum's locked for staking, which represents approximately $13.74 billion. So Cardano staking, the confidence that the community has in Cardano is way bigger than Ethereum. Though Ethereum EIP-1559, which is a major upgrade, is coming soon around July 14th. That will cause the price of ETH to likely rise because it will turn Ethereum into a deflationary token. Which with basic economic theory, if the supply is low and if there is a high demand and if Ethereum has a lot of project built in it, which it does, that means that the price of Ethereum is going to rise. Though to 
counteract this, it looks like Cardano is saying that integration of smart contract functionality into Cardano is coming in August and they are preparing their launch of the ERC-20 converter. In other news, we have a cross-chain bridge that is trying to be built with Nervos and Cardano. And Nervos is another blockchain project and they are Chinese back. They are building a bridge to connect with Cardano and this is a smart move by them because Cardano is number six in the coin rankings last I checked and they are almost 10 times bigger than Nervos. And this is what is great about cryptos. You don't need to ask for permission to leverage another crypto player. You just do it. If you do that with traditional companies, there's going to be a lot of lawyers involved. There's going to be a lot of politics. There's going to be a lot of bribery, a lot of underhandedness. And at the end of the day, nothing will be done. Now, this bridge will allow users to use the two native networks tokens interchangeably across the two blockchains using their existing wallets. Users will be able to move and trade user defined tokens across the two blockchains. And this is incredibly appealing for developers like me because it opens the market to two different audiences. To use an analogy, if you're thinking about running an ad now, you could choose either Facebook or YouTube. You can't do both. If you run an ad, you have to pick either audience. But here, with this kind of analogy, if you run one ad, it's going to go to both audiences, letting you 2x the amount of attention, which hopefully results in 2x the amount of profits. Let's talk about interoperability. Interoperability basically means the ability for blockchains to communicate with each other, because right now, blockchains are really siloed. It is highly anticipated and it is the one thing that will contribute greatly to the mainstream adoption. Just imagine how much easier life is now that we have Amazon, which connects us to many different sellers. That's interoperability because prior to that, we might have never found out about the sellers we buy from. And that's the same idea here. While we're on this topic, let's talk about Walmart because Amazon is not the only one that helps with interoperability. So let's talk about Walmart automation because that is the source of passive income that I want to introduce you to. All right, guys, just want to walk you through Walmart automation. This is something that is another passive income stream for me. I work with a trusted partner in order to do this. They do all the work and I just sit back and collect payments while providing the funds to fund inventory. You can see that the last payment that I got was 4,700 and the payments before that was 4,100. So they've been scaling it up. But on top of this, I've been using Amex to buy all the products from Amazon and Wayfair, things like that, and mark it up 25, 30% and sell that to Walmart. And we've been seeing all these transactions. So every dollar on these transactions is 1.5% because of the card I'm using. You could also use cards to earn travel points and things like that. So you could travel for free while earning a profit. But not only that, I'm also doing these for write-offs because I own a business now. You can see that I started this in 2020. My federal refund is 18K. Compare that to 2019, which was 11K. The only difference there is because now I have a business, I could do more write-offs. So you could earn more money by sleeping earn more points by sleeping and you get a bigger and better write-off on your taxes. So if you want to learn more about this, then please feel free to DM me at support at coursehack.club. I'll be happy to explain more of this to you if you want to know more. Let's talk about this El Salvador potentially adopting ADA because it looks like Charles Hoskinson, who is the founder of Cardano, he is really on top of it because it looks like he's now targeting El Salvador after El Salvador made Bitcoin legal tender. IOHK, which is Cardano's team, is looking into stable fees, integrating stable fees, which establishes a base price of transactions transactions by pegging to a basket of currencies. This will make fees more fair and predictable, which will be a game changer because right now we deal with volatility with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the fees that are, they are involved with. So Cardano seems to be in communication with El Salvador, and this is not surprising. El Salvador knows that even with Bitcoin, with the volatility of Bitcoin, it does not make it good legal tender. If Cardano works out a stable fee that they could peg products to, the next logical move will be to adopt Cardano as legal tender because of three reasons. One is the decentralized and it's not controlled by any government. We know the max supply, which means that more ADA cannot be printed like fiat money. Second, El Salvador will no longer be a victim of US monetary policy because they have been using US dollars as legal tender since I believe 2001. Three, since ADA is a crypto, they can't be sanctioned if the country they are trying to make a deal with is willing to take that crypto. No problem. And this reduces the amount of power that US can influence on other countries because of their influence on the SWIFT network and the power of the US dollar. Cardano will reduce the power that US has on other countries and it will give them more power in return on the bargaining table. Right now, we are looking at the charts of Cardano. If you want to get some Cardano right now, now is a good time because looking at this, the average price that I expect Cardano to be at right now based on where it has been, drew a Fibonacci from the top point here, the most expensive point, the all-time high that we made in mid-May. And that was around, what, 244? So using that as a high point and using the low point here, the average levels that I find that Cardano should be at is between $1.55 and $1.73. Right now, it is at $1.33 and it's touching the 50 EMA. Whenever we are on the four hour chart and we're touching the 50 EMA, that is always a good buy to me. That is my general rule of thumb. But I do recognize that right now we are in a dip. Bitcoin is still dipping. We don't know how long that's gonna go. It might go 
go down lower. So I would recommend if you are buying Cardano, not financial advice by any way, because I'm just a YouTuber, that you dollar cost average into Cardano. Spend like $100 every week buying some Cardano and you'll get in at a pretty good price on average. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed today's video about Cardano smart contracts and Cardano potentially being adopted by El Salvador, then please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Check out these other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income, and I'll see you next time. Peace.